And uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I know we've got uh, game six of the NBA Finals that's uh, happening this evening, uh, but we are breaking into programming right now because we do have a tornado warning now into effect. Uh, that tornado warning we can see for parts of Perry County and Juniata County. Uh, the National Weather Service uh, says that it is radar indicated. I've been watching this one very closely here. So what we're doing right now is we have a tornado warning that's in effect here until 915. So right now it's just close to 830. This tornado warning in effect until about 915. Uh, we're going to be talking about the radar here in uh, just a moment, but certainly some strong winds with this system. And we have been getting to notice some pretty strong rotation with this, too. As a matter of fact, let's see if we can show you some of that rotation right now. I'm going to zoom out just so we can get our bearings just to kind of show you what's happening across the mid-state. We've got one strong storm. Um, this one's producing a lot of lightning. We're going to keep an eye on any type of hail or penny-sized hail uh, that has been reported a little bit earlier. But you can see all of eastern Perry County and parts of Juniata County uh, right now in this tornado-warned area. That does not necessarily mean there is a tornado on the ground, but it does indicate radar. It does indicate that the conditions do exist for some strong rotation that could to lead to a tornado on the ground. So again, let's zoom out and we show you. So it's much of the eastern half of Perry County and Juniata County. I'm going to zoom in where uh, our weather team, I've been talking to our weather team quite a bit this evening, and it was right around the Port Royal area. What really helps us, let's see if I can get into velocity mode. Okay, so this is it uh, right now. I'm going to circle the area that we're watching very, very closely. You can see between Port Royal and Thompson Town. So this is uh, right around uh, Route 35, but also uh, 22, 322. Uh, we've got uh, one of our uh, spotters, Michael Brulo, who's actually not far from that area. That's keeping an eye on things. I know he's uh, pulled off the road, keeping an eye on things. But this is indicating some strong rotation. So this is not showing the, the typical radar that we use. This is velocity data. What velocity data tells us is the winds that are moving within this storm. And oftentimes, you know, we, we tend to see this happen quite a bit where, uh, you know, the meteorologist shows the, the winds kind of wrapping around as winds are moving away from the radar and mo winds moving toward the radar. And we can see that as it sort of creates a bit of a couplet. And that couplet that we see happening right now is between Port Royal and Thompson Town. So if you are in this area, this is a pretty serious situation that we are watching that's going to be dropping then into Perry County. So we do have safety tips. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, we get into this time of the Year. It's good to have those refresher uh, tornado safety tips. Uh, I can bring them up right now for you too. If you're in this area between uh, in Juniata County, between Port Royal, Thompson Town area, let's see if we can load those tips for you. That I would say, if you're in your home and you have a basement, absolute best place to be. Uh, that's if you don't have a basement, it's the most interior part of the room. If you have, if you're in your home. Go to the most interior part of the room, whether whether it's a hallway inside. That's the best place to be if you can. Obviously, being on the road right now is not the best place. So if you do have anybody that's in this area, as we get closer to sunset now, unlikely that we're seeing many ball games going on. But if there is happening around that area, I know we do have a, a couple of ballparks around the Thompson Town area. This is certainly one of those deals where you do want to take caution here if we have one of those situations. So obviously for cut outdoors, one of the best places to be if you can get into an area that uh, does have uh, like a brick structure, that's the best place to be at this time and certainly not on the road. So if you know anybody that is traveling in this area, give them a buzz. I'm sure they had their smartphone, uh, which mine was going off not that long ago, just alerting us of that tornado warning. Uh, it makes a really loud noise and obviously we can hear that too. So that's the reason why as we're seeing a pretty strong uh, rotation within this storm. So when we zoom out, we're still underneath this tornado watch broad area for the entire mid state until 11 o'clock this evening. But again, we're going to focus on what really is most important right now in that one storm that is moving uh, now soon into Perry County. You can actually see uh, the, the, the couplet a little bit zoomed out, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to see if I can actually move this a little slowly just to see if we can track this and track the movement of this one cell. So you can kind of see it really started to work there around Mifflin Town and it's dropping south and east. So we're going to move this radar down. That couplet is an indication of strong rotation within this storm that has the capability of producing a tornado. So right now it's going over a pretty big ridge. Uh, you can see that ridge often uh, if you're in Perry County looking north, you can obviously see that ridge. So 
do not go outside trying to find this thing. That is not the, this is not really the time to do something like that. We're in an area that is really tough to see. Uh, I know when you're watching a lot of these other footages out west, you're able to see that, but we just have so many obstructions, uh, ridges, valleys, mountains, typically uh, causing problems for us. But we can see as it's making a bit of that broad uh, circulation that we do have now beginning to move just west of Donnelly Mills. So it's going to be sinking now just east of Ickesburg. So we've got a lot of farm country here that is beginning to move in. And I would say for anyone between Ickesburg, New Bloomfield, and Newport, these would be the areas that I would be most concerned with right now, that if you are watching us, again, we do have the NBA Finals that, that, that's happening here this evening. Uh, as, we're watch, as we continue with this, this is going to be going on. This tornado warning is going to be going on until 9.15. So this is going to be taking a little while. It, the, the, it is always possible that we could see this expire a little bit sooner. But what I'm seeing right now, I would say no. There, there's, there's certainly a good validation and reason why we're on air right now because of this tornado warning that I would say, again, moving soon into Perry County. It doesn't seem like it has quite that tight rotation a little bit earlier, but still uh, a pretty strong indication that as this begins to move over the mountains, Ickesburg, Elliottsburg, New Bloomfield, Newport. I just named all the towns pretty much the, the heart of Perry County, and that's where we're seeing Again, the, the greatest amount of agriculture, too. As we're heading towards sunset, again, this is not something that you're going to be able to see. And if you're in this tornado warning, just do the right thing. Uh, if you have your family with you, just say, okay, where, where's the place that we need to go? Where is the place that we need to be at this time? And again, if you're outside, obviously finding a place that, that's close by and getting the, into the uh, most interior part of the, of the room. So let's see if I can go back to the actual radar itself because this thing has a ton of lightning. And I'm sure perhaps some of us in Harrisburg, as we get closer to sunset, we're going to be seeing a lot of this too. This is, this is very interesting. So even uh, as we look at the radar here, sometimes we can uh, pop up some of our um, signatures here, and it does indicate some of that rotation. You can kind of see that one icon there giving us that rotation. And that's exactly where we're watching this right now, as it begins to just kind of cross over that mountain between Juniata County and Perry County. So uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. I know we do have uh, one of our storm spotters uh, who has also helped us on. He's a part of our weather team, Michael Brulo. We'll see. I'll keep an ear out uh, for our newsroom and our production if we're able to get him. We'll certainly talk to him because I know he's within that area alongside 322 as he's been doing some storm spotting uh, throughout uh, the early afternoon and evening hours. But if so, if we're able to get him, uh, feel free to let me know so we can maybe chat with him to see what he's uh, seeing and hearing right now. Uh, as we show you uh, right now out of Thompson Town, that's where we're getting some very heavy rain. And that's one of those deals. This is not one of those simple, yeah, we can see that rotation. No, we've got a lot of heavy rain with this and a lot of lightning too. So. It's the wind, it's the, the heavy rain, the torrential rain, but at the same time, we're getting a lot of lightning. So I would not be surprised if we're going to be hearing some, uh, you know, perhaps some power outages, hopefully brief in nature, when we got a lot of, a lot of this uh, lightning moving through. So again, I, I like to just uh, kind of reiterate, if you are joining us, there is a tornado warning for Juniad and Perry, but I would say now it's beginning to be a little bit more focused on Perry County. So a lot of the times when we do have a tornado warning, it is an indication. The National Weather Service uh, has a radar indicated uh, rotation, and that's why we're seeing this uh, tornado warning now into effect until about uh, 915. So I'm going to zoom in again. Let's see if we can show you how we're beginning to see this take shape. And it's now moving more of like a southeast. So we're talking more uh, Newport, uh, Newport area. Um, we're still between Ickesburg and Newport. Do we have any information, Ali? We good? Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a team here, and it's not just the weather team, but it's everyone. So we're all on board. If there, there's something that we are hearing, obviously we have our newsroom that's involved too. They're going to be keeping a close uh, ear on some things and obviously going to pass it along here into the weather department too. But as this goes on, this is tracking south and east and you know, we've got a lot of rain. If there was one place too that if we're going to be seeing some hail, it's going to be moving right over the mountains. So it's kind of going to be encompassing. Let's see if I can highlight this. Marklesville and Newport, uh, I would say for some of us in Millerstown, I would still be in guard with this too. Um, if this continues to drop south and east, that includes uh, some of us uh, in, in Duncannon. 
anywhere between Newport and Duncannon um, so that, that I would say, okay, we're going to have to keep an eye on this because this is going to be going on for at least another half an hour, if not longer. A lot of the times when we talk about tornado warnings, typically 15, 20 minutes in nature. So I would say, you know, the National Weather Service, as they watch this, and extended this out for an additional, you know, more than 30 minutes, between 30 and 40 minutes. This is a pretty serious situation here. Now, we're not hearing anything yet. Again, it's Doppler radar indicated. We can kind of see between Marcosville, Newport, and Millerstown. Uh, I'm going to go back to the velocity because that tends to help us out a lot. And this is, as you zoom in, yeah, not quite as broad, uh, as a tight of the circulation as you would normally like to see. Oftentimes, when I look at something like this, this is telling me more of a uh, mesocyclone, which to me, that's just really the, the guts, the insides of what is the strongest part of the thunderstorm. A lot of the times when we see a tighter circulation or a couplet out of this, that's when we start raising the flag saying, yeah, this is, this is more of a serious situation for us. But when we're talking even a mesocyclone, what does that mean when we're looking at, uh, you know, here at the surface and at the ground? So we're going to be watching for uh, some damaging wind gusts. A lot of the times what we get verifying out of these systems is maybe not an EF0, or EF1, but straight line winds. I know it doesn't sound as strong or as important, but we get straight line winds just as strong as we can get to some of those uh, EF0, EF1 tornadoes. That does happen. You get all of this air that goes up into the storm. And what we've learned to what goes up is eventually going to have to come down at some time. And you get a lot of this rain cooled air that drops very quickly and it just pushes everything down, creating some of these straight line winds. So it's moving in the area that I've been talking about. I mean, I can uh, as we zoom out and if you're joining us, whether it's Franklin County, Cumberland, Dolphin, uh, Lancaster, Lebanon counties, uh, we certainly thank you. This is mainly and it's just really one storm that we have right now. That is in Juniata County, dropping into Perry County. I would say some of us in Dolphin County will need to watch this closely too, and we'll see if this extends south and east uh, through Perry County that may move into Dolphin. So that would be still uh, closer to the nine o'clock hour if we saw a situation like that occur. This is the velocity data, uh, and we um, I, I like to zoom in and just kind of keep a close eye on this as I'm kind of keeping an eye on a couple of other things. And I know our meteorologists, we've got uh, Addis Euclid, Dan Tomaso, they're always trying to keeping an update on social media too. So obviously we've got to different ways. And if it, we've got the technology nowadays too, even if you're in this area. And again, uh, we're talking uh, 34, 274, um, even 849. Those would be some of the roads too. But you know, a lot of the times we're live that you can go onto our website or on the app and you can follow us. So if you have to go to one of those locations, if you have to go to the basement, if you're seeking shelter or if you're just following us here and you're traveling like, OK, it's, it's best we tuck in somewhere. We stream this so you're able to take this with you wherever you go. And I think that's very important. And that's one of the best technologies that we have nowadays that we're able to track this and you can continue to follow us too. So I want to go back to the lightning uh, and just take you. This is typically the radar that you're used to seeing as we're showing you more of the heavy rain. And I'm going to take this more into a loop just to kind of see the nature and the direction of this storm. This is the only one. I mean, this is the only one that we're tracking right now that we have as it's moving through now. I'd say the northeast part of Perry County. Uh, I did get to some reports out of Snyder County that's just saying just heavy rain and no hail at this time. But that was just prior to the tornado warning as we see this now dropping into um, anywhere from Liverpool and down through, you know, Millersburg, I'm sure you're getting uh, and hearing a light show at this time. Same for Halifax and uh, for anyone in Harrisburg that's perhaps looking north and west, you're probably hear, uh, seeing this, if not hearing this too. A lot of lightning with this, uh, a lot of lightning, uh, some of the heavier rain. Uh, a lot of the times too, if I have the opportunity, I'd like to show if we can get uh, any type of maybe hail signature out of this. This is what we're looking at. So if we were able to see any hail right now, OK, there's Route 17. So anywhere from, I would say, Donnelly Mills from 17 down to 849 in Marcosville. If we're finding out that if there's any hail that's happening right now, that would be the location for some of us in that area. Uh, I want to see if I can see if I can get any uh, shear. So shear is really the best indication of where we see the best circulation within the storm. And no surprise, that's where we're seeing the hail at this time, too. So that's kind of giving us that more of an opportunity. So in this area, I mean, for anyone in this area, it's highly agricultural. 
we, we've got a lot of rolling hills too. Um, this is going to be one of those deals where as it continues to drop, uh, it's going to slowly move into some higher populated areas. But right now, it's just as important for a lot of us that are between uh, Ickesburg, Marklesville, and Newport. So this is the shear that we have. Uh, let's see if we can go to the shear history. I think this might be a little more impressive. So this is, again, the, the best indication of where would we be seeing that tight circulation that could potentially cause or create a tornado as we see that. So you can kind of see that as that moved over 35 just east of Port Royal, hopped over the mountain, now it's dropping across 17. So that's the shear history, and I'm sure the hail history is going to be showing something almost identical. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, I don't see this too often to see the, 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 the hail history and, and just the the amount uh, of confidence of hail in this location. Let's see if I can stop this and just see. This is just looking past uh, some of the, the old information. So Route 35, wow, just west of Van Wert. I would not be surprised if we're going to be getting some reports of hail out of that system. Uh, and that was just east of Mifflin Town. We get a little bit farther south, so there's Donnelly Mills. So this is all just talking hail history. I still think the most important thing we want to do, obviously, I just kind of, uh, move around a little bit to talk about this storm, but we're going to keep watching what is on the leading edge of this storm and where we could be seeing the strongest part. So right now, I would say as it's moving south and east, it would be between Marklesville and Newport. This is where we're going to be watching. Now, let's see if some of our velocity data is showing similar conditions here. So it's still showing, I would say, more of a broad circulation, more of a meso-type cyclone, Donnelly Mills, Marklesville. This is probably where we're going to be seeing uh, uh, wind damage and hail at the same time. So there's a lot that's happening that's sinking south and east. The best thing that can happen right now is it begin to deteriorate. But as I was talking to my meteorologist, our meteorologist team a, uh, a little bit earlier, Addis Euclid said some of the parameters that have set up just for this evening, some of the best parameters for producing severe weather that we've seen so far this year. Uh, you know, a lot of the times we might have certain ingredients. We may not have all of the ingredients, but we have a little bit more now compared to what we've had earlier. And I know we've had uh, some tornadoes earlier. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think we had two, if not three, EF zeros that happened. Uh, one was in Franklin County, another in Lancaster County. We'll see what takes shape about this, uh, what we have with this one right now. And that is in Eastern Perry. So uh, we've been on here for, OK, OK. So I'm just talking to uh, production here. So we do have Michael Brulo that's, that's uh, on with us. And Michael Brulo, you may have seen him before. He's, he's actually jumped in and been a part of our weather team here, I'd say, for the last two months. Uh, he is a Central PA uh, certified storm spotter. And he's been tracking some of these storms. Uh, Michael, are, are you with us right now? Yeah, Eric, can you hear me? Uh, I can. So tell me where you're located right now. So I, I am just west of Newport. I, uh, I'm on the Perry Juniata line on Middle Ridge Road, and we're right at the leading edge of what's left of the rotation. There's still a broad area of rotation, uh, but right now looking at the radar, it looks like some really strong wind's going to come uh, about two miles west of Newport here as the storm moves south and east. And New Bloomfield's up next as well. Uh, new Bloomfield, if it's not there already, it's going to be there very soon. And I know you've been taking some shots a little bit earlier. You've been sitting sort of on the leading edge. For a lot of the viewers that may have seen the leading edge of this storm, uh, you've got a, some great shots of, of a shelf cloud. A shelf cloud is normally, you know, uh, sort of the, the leading edge of this storm and some of that rain cooled air. Um, are, where are you in compared to that uh, shelf cloud at this time? So the shelf cloud has completely enveloped me here uh, on the on the Middle Ridge Road that I'm on. I'm on kind of a ridge here, so I don't want to go any I don't want to go any uh, further just because of trees and it's dark. So this is probably the last place I'll be just for safety concerns. But uh, the, the shelf cloud has come over, and and I've been on this storm since Western Pennsylvania. So this storm has been the storm of the day as it developed uh, near Lake Erie and moved uh, across Interstate 80 into the state college area around dinner time and now as we move in towards nighttime uh, down towards Harrisburg. So this is the, the single storm of the day and it, uh, it has been consistently strong. So again, uh, strong winds here uh, just west of Newport and uh, perhaps uh, in New Bloomfield or just north of New Bloomfield this time. Uh, no hail yet, 
but uh, I have seen some hail with this storm, and this storm has produced damage uh, in, in Center County. Uh, you know, I've, I've been listening to you a little bit earlier, too. Uh, you might have uh, had maybe a little bit of damage, maybe some dents on your own uh, vehicle. But I would say the strongest hail signatures that we did have was uh, just, I think it was just east of Port Royal or around uh, uh, McAllisterville area, too. Um, did you hear any about any hail reports in Juniata County before it jumped over into Perry County? I have not. Uh, we don't have many spotters up here just because it's such a rural area. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I'm out here today doing it myself. But uh, I, I haven't seen any hail since Center County. However, uh, that hail core is about to come over here me now. And I'm sure you'll hear it on the phone here momentarily. So you're, you're, you're actually experiencing some hail right now? Not yet. Okay. Not yet, but it's, oh, it, there is hail. There, there's hail falling now. It's mostly pea size. And this is very, this is very unique. The hail is falling before the rain. Um, we have very little bit of rain, and it's starting with hail. So here okay. on Middle Ridge Road at the Juniata Perry line, some small hail is beginning to mix in. Um, now we're seeing dime to perhaps nickel size. Okay. Uh, so I, what we're seeing, uh, just to give you a heads up, and I'm sure you, you have all of the, uh, the information at your hands too, but um, it seems like right around Newport, that's where we're seeing the, the, the tightest group of lightning, I would say the heaviest rain, and likely what's going to be some pretty strong hail. I'm going to actually bring up on our radar to see if we can track some of this hail if we're seeing that right now. And you were talking about New Bloomfield too, and that, yeah, we're, we're certainly seeing that, Michael. Now, uh, just some of the wind history. Have you noticed any wind damage since you've been tracking these storms a little bit earlier today? Yes, so uh, hopefully you can still hear me here. It's uh, pretty loud, the hail and the rain. Um, this storm in particular produced wind damage in Center County near Center Hall. Um, as, I was, as I was coming down from Bald Eagle, uh, there was a down tree uh, in Center Hall, and actually a power pole, a, a telephone pole, was completely sheared in half. So anytime that happens, you know, you can, you can expect wind to be at least 60 miles an hour. So even if there is not a tornado at this time, which... You know, it doesn't really matter in Pennsylvania. It's a, it's a serious storm, and with the, with these strong winds, and you take it as if it's a tornado. You need to uh, take these winds seriously as they move in through uh, Perry County. Thanks, Mike. Uh, you know, we, we've got uh, Valerie Pritchett that's here with us, too, and she's, she's keeping an eye on some things, too, any reports that may be coming in. So we've got different ways of keeping, uh, keeping everybody informed. Uh, when we're talking the, the rain, would that be also an issue? Have you seen any type of ponding of water or flooding? Uh, I know we talk so much, a lot about uh, uh, the lightning and the winds, but let's also talk about uh, some of the rain. Anything that may be a bit of an issue for anybody traveling in this area? Oh, yes. Uh, the dew point was very high this afternoon in the 70s. So as I was coming down uh, the PA-322 from Center County, it was, it was a mess. Uh, you know, speed had to be about 30 miles an hour just so I didn't hydroplane. So these storms are packing a lot of rain as well. I bet you uh, some stations are going to be reporting over half an inch to closer of an inch of rain by the time the storm comes through. So a, a big burst of rain, a little bit of tail there at the beginning, and certainly some strong winds uh, in, in pockets. All right, and uh, again, just uh, joining us and talking to, this is Michael Brulo that we do have. He's a, he's a Skywarn spotter as he's kind of keeping an eye on things right now between uh, Perry and uh, Juniata County line. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you. We might touch base with you here in just a little bit. Uh, stay safe out there. Also, let's see if we can uh, uh, tune into and check in with uh, Dan Tommaso. We got meteorologist Dan Tommaso here. And Dan, it's always nice to have another eye on certain things too, and sort of uh, perhaps a different perspective from what you're seeing on your end. Dan, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Eric. And hopefully, you guys can hear me at home. And you know, this is one of these days that we start out with rain and we start out with thunderstorms in some areas over Dolphin, York. Um, Lebanon and Lancaster counties, but we've been waiting on this line literally all evening to drop down um, from north to south. And unfortunately, the western end or the back end of this particular cell, um, passing south of Newport, southeast into Perry County, um, approaching parts of Duncannon and the river, um, it's still showing a little bit of a hook signature on radar. I'm actually on the MAX 3 system um, for our control room upstairs. And unfortunately, again, this system, this this cell that continues to have some rotation, some tight rotation within it, um, continues its trek to the south and southeast. And so if you are in areas near Duncannon, or um, as we zoom in a little bit closer, if I can, um, let's get a little bit closer down to street level and such. Um, you can see there's Newport. Uh, the cell is just to the northwest of Duncannon. Keep in mind, 
one thing that's tricky about radar is we only get updates every five minutes. So if you're un, if you're in Duncannon at this time, you want to be in your safe place. And I know you've been reviewing that, Eric. But eventually, this is going to move downriver closer to Marysville. A lot of lightning. You will hear the thunder and see the lightning, but there's a lot of heavy rain. And one of the issues in our area is visibility when it comes to tornadoes. That they can be brief, they can be intense, but oftentimes they're shielded by rain um, as some of the heavier rain comes down in the core of these cells. So again, the red box um, goes until 915, I believe. So um, this is a very long morning. It may be extended farther to the south and southeast. And this is not far now. This is probably about a good 10 to 15 miles, Eric, from Harrisburg at this point. Um, And if it continues on its current track, um, we'll be talking about parts of Cumberland and Dauphin County likely being added to this warning. And Valerie, I know you were in the newsroom just shortly. I mean, getting a view from Harrisburg looking north and west. uh, I mean, what can we see just from uh, in the Harrisburg area looking northwest? Yeah, when I was looking northwest, I just saw lightning strikes and it looked really, 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 really dark. I have a friend that lives in um, in the new Bloomfield area and uh, they are telling me that it's pouring there now. They just put their dogs and everything in the basement for safety. And so that looks like it's quite a storm. And this is the only one that we have happening right now. Uh, Hopefully we see some weakening uh, with this. What I do have to do, this is now moving into an area that's that, that, that's near home for me. Yes, so, it is. So, uh, you know. Did you to, check in with your family? To the entire family, well, they better be watching. <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> but, yeah, certainly. I would say, uh, you know, you're at home uh, for, for all of those, uh, you know, back home in eastern Perry County, a little bit closer to Duncannon. And, and as we were talking with Michael Brulo and Dan Tommaso uh, around the, new, the Bloomfield area. But this is one of those deals where... Hey, it may not seem like it's all that important of a big deal, uh, it, but as we see this and we track this, of course, we'll go back later to see if this actually verified, if we actually have any damage. But if you're near this or just in advance of this, do the right thing. And uh, some of those safety tips that we do have, as a matter of fact, it's been a little while since I brought those safety tips up. Uh, and even if you're not in this area, you know, if you're in uh, Lancaster, Lebanon, Franklin, Cumberland counties, Adams County, saying, well, this is not really a big impact. At some point in time, you know, we're going to be having other storms in other counties. So it's nice to get a, you know, a bit of a, a plan, a, a plan for the family. And if you're with the kids, say, okay, kids, what's, if, if we have a problem, if we have a tornado warning, what are we going to be doing? What are we going to be doing if we're in our house? So the best place to go is obviously in the basement or the center of the home. You know, a lot of the times it, it looks a, a little goofy when you see the people out west, uh, you know, out in the uh, tornado alley of putting on a helmet. But obviously much serious and more frequent situations out there. Uh, we don't get the, oppor- or the the chances of these type of systems uh, that often. So that's why it's good to just kind of bring up some of these safety tips because it doesn't happen as often as what we typically see out west. Staying away from windows. Obviously, that's a big deal anytime we see any type of storm. Uh, mobile homes, some of the worst places to actually be. So if there is more of a sturdy structure, that's the place to be. Speaking of which, you know, we've got uh, Paradise uh, Mobile Home Park area. That is not all that far away from some of the rotation that we're seeing. If you're outside, and hopefully by now as we're close to the sunset, best place to do is still find one of those sturdy locations. Driving, not obviously the best idea right now. Uh, Speaking of driving, let's see if I can zoom in and show you some of the uh, locations. Obviously, it is going to be 274. Uh, 274 kind of goes right through Perry County, 849. And for people that's watching, uh, I would say from Marysville and Harrisburg, this is sinking south and east. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you the track of this. And it's dropping south and east, so I wouldn't even rule out the uh, near Dolphin area, Dolphin Borough, as we see this storm. I was just looking at some of the uh, the information I was kind of sending back and forth to, to, to our weather team, and it seems like this the, the broad circulation that we did have initially in Juniata County doesn't seem quite as strong. Uh, let me first show you, if we were to get any type of hail from this, um, uh, there, yeah, I mean, to me, this, this is home. So Montebello, Rose Glen, this is where we could be seeing some dime-sized, penny-sized hail. When we were talking to Michael Brulo a little bit earlier, he was getting hail at the time, getting some information right now coming out of the uh, uh, National Weather Service. So just talking about continuing the tornado watch. So that it's still for Adams, Cumberland, Dolphin, Franklin, Juniata, Lancaster, Lebanon, Mifflin counties, Northumberland, Perry, Snyder. But basically, again, this storm is the one game in town that we do have happening right now. And that seems to be going to, at some point, I would say in about 20 minutes to a half an hour, it's eventually going to be out of Perry County and moving into central Dolphin County. Um, Thank you very much, Allie. That's just keeping this tornado watch going until 
11 o'clock this evening. And that's different from the actual warned area. What we always like to do is go back and see if we can look at the velocity when we were talking to the weather team. Yeah, this is not quite uh, as uh, tight of a circulation as what we have seen in the past, which is a good thing. That means, I, I don't know if I want to use the term weakening, because if you're underneath this right now, I'm sure you're not thinking this is a weakening storm, but it's perhaps a little bit weaker or not quite as strong as what we initially saw a little bit earlier. So uh, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more within this area to see if we can get some closer locations. I mean, that is around New Bloomfield. That's going to continue from New Bloomfield over to 34, around 34, hitting Mex Corner, then dropping down into parts of like Rose Glen. That extends down Delville. You know, for those of us in Delville, near, Sher uh, Delville, near, Sher near Sherman's Creek, we're going to be watching that too. Uh, Cove, for a lot of us in the Cove area, and the Cove is in between the two mountains here, a lot of the times we, we can see some severe weather in the Cove, and that is probably moving right into that direction. Uh, eventually moving across the river. Hopefully by then the storm continues to weaken. So if you are joining us, we've been on for about the last half an hour. We do have a tornado warning for eastern Perry County. Uh, I know we've got to game six, which is it's probably starting shortly. Uh, hopefully this thing's going to be expiring here uh, sh uh, fairly soon. It is expected to go into about 915. So the good news is as we continue to watch this, uh, as we are going to be, of course, uh, breaking into programming, we're only talking about maybe another 10 to 15 minutes, and hopefully that's all that we have to worry about, and then we can kind of move on for the rest of the evening. But for those of us that, uh, Val, that are dealing with this right now, it, it's more of a bigger situation. Yeah, it's in fact, I just got an update from my uh, friends in New Bloomfield. So far, they're safe, very heavy rain in their area, very heavy rain, but they're still uh, seeking shelter, which is smart. And I'd say the last time, you know, we had something like this a couple of weeks ago, um, and I don't think we actually had any tornado warnings at that time. So sometimes we can get some brief spin-ups that doesn't prompt a tornado warning, uh, and other times we can actually be in a tornado warning that doesn't actually produce a tornado. But what I saw initially in Juniata County, th this was pretty strong initially. Yes, and it was, you, you had it perfectly today. You told us to watch out when time was coming tonight. And uh, hopefully people heeded the warning and paid attention. So if they were out or they were, you know, traveling, they got to safety and, and or just stayed in. One of the big events today, Jubilee Day. Fortunately, yes. uh, I would say is that probably soon to wrap up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is north, but I mean, it's if we can kind of even show. Yeah, well, I, I just zoomed out. Oh, look at that lightning. You know what? Uh, for those of us in Jubilee Day, you're hearing and probably seeing the, the thunder and lightning, and we're starting to see some development now beginning to drop, drop near down. Carlisle. So for those of us around Jubilee Day, too, I would say a bit of a heads up. and. A lot of lightning that we see obviously right now through Perry County, but we're getting a little bit more now just north of Carlisle wow, and that's going to that. be moving east. So I think, you know, for Jubilee Day that hasn't happened for the last two years, there's a look at the tower cam. Um, I'm trying to, yep, that's looking right up towards Perry County too through the, uh, right up along the Susquehanna River. And I've always heard if you see lightning, you should just take shelter, even though it looks as though it's far away. Is that still the case? You know, you, you can kind of figure out the distance mm -hmm. between, you know, once you see the lightning, you count the number of seconds mm -hmm. when you hear the thunder. But normally, if to me, if I hear that within 15, 20 seconds, to me, that's close enough. Take shelter. <laughs> Best thing to do is, is to do that. And, you know, if you're in Lancaster County or York County, probably calling this heat lightning. You're not hearing the thunder, but you're, you're seeing the lightning. And oftentimes, I mean, they say heat lightning doesn't, is not really a, a thing. Um, it's just actually seeing a thunderstorm off into a distance. And now we're watching it. I guess it's still kind of moving past Newport. I guess the back end of it coming through now, almost. So the, the good news is it's, it's really just kind of falling apart into smaller clusters. I mean, this was one large storm initially. And now it's, I, I see, I do see some weakening. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, but again, for those of us that are in, you know, in closer to Duncan, it yeah. may not seem like that at all. Uh, let's see if we can get a bit of an update. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in, see if I, I can see here in velocity. And, you know, I talked about velocity a little bit earlier. That gives us an idea if we're seeing any type of rotation. And I mean, it was, Val, there was some strong rotation. I'm gonna get a line and you can kind of see uh, some of the bright reds and greens. So again, that, that's a bit of a couplet. That couplet has fallen apart just a little bit. 
enough that well, we're not seeing the strong circulation that we did a little bit earlier. But it wouldn't hurt. Let's see if we can take a look at maybe there's, if there's any shear, much less shear, which is really one of the main factors and ingredients here to leading to uh, circulation uh, within a thunderstorm that could lead to a tornado. And then we go back to, let's see, I'm going to go to the current hail. So there still is some indication that we could be seeing some hail. And that would be right along 274 between a Mex Corner uh, and Rose Glen. So we're talking areas near uh, Snyder's Church, for example, uh, Windy Hill, uh, areas near, again, the, uh, uh, Paradise. That would be something that if we're seeing any hail right now, that would be a location. Obviously, Paradise maybe not acting and seeming a little bit like paradise, paradise right, right now. now. Yeah, we're getting some reports on social media and flickering power between Newport and New Bloomfield. So that's another thing I guess people are going to have to watch out for throughout the rest of the evening is losing power. Uh, there is a storm report. OK, this is just from some of the past. Uh, we've got some wind damage reports a little bit earlier, but this is this is talking in, in Center County, and that's where we really did begin to see sort of the spawning of this one storm that then moved into uh, Mifflin, Juniata, Snyder counties. But haven't heard a whole lot yet, which is a good thing. Hopefully we can get out of this. And again, this is going to go until 915. Um, I know we've got game six, six that's happening this evening. By 9.15, uh, this, this is likely to expire. I don't really expect, Valerie, this to continue, which is good. That's I'm not good really news. seeing this storm kind of holding together like it did a little bit earlier. Uh, so I would more than likely expect to see severe thunderstorm warnings being posted instead of tornado warnings. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's see if I pop up. Yeah, so they haven't. I would say I'd be surprised if we don't see a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for, for Dolphin and Eastern Cumberland here maybe develop in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. If not, that's telling us this thing's really beginning to weaken. If it is, okay, there it is. Well, the severe thunderstorm go. warning for Eastern Cumberland and Western Dolphin County. A lot of the times when you track storms like this, you kind of get an idea of what's about to happen. So let's see if we can uh, update you. So this is telling us that conditions for 60 mile an hour wind gusts still exist. So we now have a severe thunderstorm warning. And this does include uh, our friends that may be at Jubilee Day in Mechanicsburg. So okay. something to keep in take, mind. Get, take, start to take shelter somewhere. You have some of those canopies too. They don't <laughs> last in, in a 20 mile an hour wind gust. Let alone you know, what we're saying. A 60 mile an hour wind gust. So thanks, Allie. So we've got this uh, going on until 10 o'clock. This is not the tornado warning. This is the severe thunderstorm warning that's going to be in effect for eastern Cumberland, southwestern Dolphin until 10. So this is um, potential for hail and also 60 mile an hour wind gusts. I'm not sure if we still have Michael Brulo um, still on the phone with us. Michael Brulo was uh, closer to the Perry uh, Juniata County line a little bit earlier. Do we still have Michael? Eric, can you hear me? I can, Michael. Uh, so tell me what's happening right now where you are and first where you're located. So, so right now I'm on 322 in Perry County, uh, about uh, two miles north of Amity Hall, continuing uh, continuing my drive home away from the uh, the circulation. But, yeah, as, as you said, that circulation has really just uh, kind of fizzled out, which is really, really good news. Uh, it did look very strong at one point in uh, Juniata, Mifflin County, near Mexico, but... Uh, since then, that circulation has kind of broadened, and uh, as you said as well, the storm has kind of uh, switched from a, a, an intense single storm to more of a cluster. So hopefully that means uh, a little less severe wind there with that as well. The rain is still coming down very hard, and uh, I suspect that people just west of Duncannon may be seeing some small hail at this point, too. Uh, that radar return showing some strong uh, returns there just west of Duncannon. So... Uh, my travels down 322 will take me down there. I will let you know what I see. But again, it all looks like good news with a weakening storm here as it moves uh, into uh, eastern Perry and also eastern Cumberland and eventually into west central Dauphin County. So uh, it did produce damage in Center County, but uh, as it's moving down towards Harrisburg, at, at this moment, you know, it can change, but at this moment, things are looking good. All right, uh, Michael Brullo, he a storm spotter right now moving through uh, parts of Perry County. Uh, thanks for the uh, the update. 
And even uh, hail signatures, it's looking less and less. And if there's anything that I can say that I'm noticing now is instead of one very strong storm, it's kind of stretched out. So for those of us in eastern Perry and eastern Juniata, when we thought the storm was gone, we just now have a, a continuous uh, st uh, storm that's now just likely going to be more of a rainmaker. Uh, Dan Tommaso, are you still with us? I know, Dan, you're tracking this uh, with us as well. Always good to get uh, your opinion to see what we have happening too. Dan? Well, I can tell you, Eric, I'm still here, and I'm watching from Hershey, um, where I live, and I'm starting to already get lightning, uh, pretty frequent lightning. I'd say cloud to cloud. So the storm is advancing far enough to the south and southeast that at least some of us here in southern some it's starting to hear the impact. thunder, too. So that's why the severe thunderstorm warning is in place um, that's south and southeast of Harrisburg. But um, as you've been talking about, this tornado warning itself, it goes until 915. Folks are asking about, um, you know, how much longer is the threat, so to speak. Well, the National Weather Service is letting this thing go, and they're not extending a tornado warning yet okay. into parts of Dolphin County. So that's the good news. But there is still that tight little clustering there, Eric. And while it's not as weak as it was, you can still kind of make it out in the velocity mode, um, which I do have, again, up on Max 3. But the couplet itself, which is about south and southeast of State Route 34, it's definitely not as strong. But there's still some tightening there, um, likely getting some interference. The problem with radar in our location is there's so many mountains and ridges, and so we may not be getting the clearest view of the storm either. So there is still a tornadic threat with this. I don't think it is as great as it was before. Um, but certainly some high wind gusts in this area and hail, as Michael was talking about, with storms that get to be this tall, um, hail is definitely a likely threat. And um, you won't see that until it hits. And even quarter-sized hail um, can cause damage. I know I had damage here uh, to my house roof last June, um, which I didn't even really realize until after the storm had long passed. Um, so this is not something you want to mess around with. You definitely want to be in a steady structure, whether that's your home, um, you know, and, and try to get away from any doors or windows to be safe. Dan, thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, we, we are getting uh, some people talking about, uh, obviously, game six and <clears throat> 915. You know, I would really think for as far as, uh, you know, this tornado warning expiring, we're, we're done and we're out of here by 915. But we do see now a severe thunderstorm warning. So I would say for about another another 10 minutes, Valerie, I think the best thing to do is just to make sure we inform those that are dealing with this storm to keep them informed right now. And then once we're done, we're, we're going to be getting back to that game. But uh, it's moving over now, I would say, Cove. Um, uh, the Cove area uh, near King Cora Heights along 1115. Uh, when you're in an area like this and you've been hearing about the potential for uh, a tornado, this is why we're on. Uh, you know, this is what we have to do to make sure um, you know, the people that are watching are safe and they know exactly what's going on and what to do. So obviously, uh, Valerie, when this wraps up, you know, we're back to the game. But uh, I've seen situations and I've seen I've talked to people who have experienced, you know, actual strong storms and seen sort of tornado damage. And it can be, you know, I don't want to use the word traumatizing, but it, it can be a serious situation. Yeah, and if you're in the thick of it, you want to know what's going on mm -hmm. right now to keep your family safe. We are getting a couple more reports that the winds were bad off 274, which is in mm -hmm. Perry County. Um, awful sounded like windows were going to break from one person. Another person reporting hail in Newport. So these are probably from a little bit earlier as the storm moves through. We had, we had everything all at one time. And as I was just talking to Dan and one of our storm spotters, Michael Brulo, it's nice to see this thing slowly beginning to wrap up. But as Dan mentioned too, unlikely, you know, the National Weather Service is gonna expire this thing. We're, we're only a few minutes left out of this. So that's probably why we're gonna continue on with this at this time. But um, with the uh, severe thunderstorm warning, that's now gonna be uh, pushed into Eastern Cumberland in southwestern Dolphin counties, we're going to be seeing now this storm pushing into southern Dolphin. As a matter of fact, uh, it's right over the Susquehanna River that we see right now. So it's pushing just south of Duncannon. If we're to see any hail or some of those strong winds that you were talking about, mm -hmm. I mean, if it's rattling windows, that, that's, that's strong. That, that, that's, that, that we're looking at some strong stuff. And this is a, one of our tower cams looking northwest up toward that area right near Cove. And again, this is along 1115. So as we uh, look from Harrisburg, I would say those of us in Harrisburg, we're, we're, we're not going to skip out on this one. We're, we're at least going to be getting some rain with this. As a matter of fact, uh, it's beginning to kind of show more of a western development. And that's why I think most, if not all, of Harrisburg is going to be seeing the lightning, maybe some of the damaging wind gusts, and also some of this heavy rain.
Uh, are we getting anything, uh, any type of other damage uh, from into our newsroom? I haven't heard of any other any damage yet. I know we're going to be checking that. Ali Barubi's with us as well. We bring the whole team out, whoever's here, all hands on deck, and she's running to the newsroom to check if we have received anything new. I am just checking. So Chuck Rhodes, I check text Chuck, see how it's going. He's like hail, lightning, heavy downpours where he is right now. Okay, and I'm just getting report out of Duncannon, a lot of hail. Um, so there were, they, they experienced a lot of hail, and that was closer to the, uh, the Rose Glen area. So we are getting a lot of hail around that, that area between uh, Delville and Rose Glen. So that's an indication that we had a pretty strong storm that did move through. Um, hopefully not big enough to create any type of damage on rooftops or on uh, any vehicles. Uh, always fingers crossed there. Um, but that still is, is telling us that this was just moments ago. So we're, we're still seeing somewhat of a strong storm. Hopefully it's just not the circulation creating a, or, or prompting any type of tornado warning. So yeah. especially there, at night when you can't see things like that, you know, it's kind of frightening if there is something circulating on the ground. We've got, uh, so hopefully this is, this is good news too, as we begin tip off here with, uh, uh, as we have uh, game six of the NBA finals, we're only on for a few more minutes and, and then we're done. And we, we have good news to continue to report that once this storm and we're getting some of that rain that's over arriving us now, now. Yes. Um, a lot of the times too, you can almost hear through a microphone, but this is telling us that we should be able to get back to the game shortly. Um, as this expires in less than seven minutes, uh, let me zoom in. I think it's just going to get one recap as we kind of show you here at the same time. Um, right over Duncannon, we did get some report of a lot of hail. I haven't uh, got information on the size, the, the, the size of the hail. Obviously, lots of hail, uh, pea size is, is okay, but when you're talking nickel size, that can be more of an issue. So right now, it's right along 1115 between Duncannon and Cove is where we'd be seeing some of the heaviest rain, even though the amount of lightning much less lightning than what did see a little bit earlier, but still putting on a show between uh, right along the Susquehanna River that's eventually going to be moving over Marysville, then heading in toward the Dolphin Borough. Lingolstown is going to be seeing it too. So as uh, some of this rain continues on, hopefully this just kind of washed itself out as we see weakening in this system. Still an extension of rain that extends all the way up into Juniata County. So I'm sure there's going to be some reports of uh, well over an inch of rain from some of these uh, areas in eastern uh, Perry County and parts of Juniata County too. Yeah, and you know when you have heavy rains like this and you hear about the winds, you want to make sure you stay away from windows. Always have that flashlight ready. We have a couple that are stationed around the house so we can grab them just in case the power goes out. And it's always good even if you're not being impacted by this and there's a large portion of a viewing audience I know that is not. It's good to come up with a, a plan if something like this does happen because at some point at some time you're going to be uh, you know dealing with a situation like this and uh, you know fortunately if we had if this ex tornado warning was extended we'd probably be taking uh, precautions right now because yes. we're hearing the thunder we're feel uh, we're beginning to hear some of that heavy rain too. So the good news is as we talk to Michael Brulo uh, one of our storm spotters as we talk to Dan Tomas so this is all beginning to show that it's beginning to fall apart here, but we still have some embedded strong storm. So what I want to do, uh, Valerie, is just take one more lap around all of this mm -hmm. and hopefully, and again, if you're tuning in saying what's going on here, we've got until about 915 and the tornado warning expires and then we're done. Uh, we're back to, to, to watching uh, Golden State in, in, in Boston, but uh, until then, we still have some of these storms. Um, let's see if we can get you show some of the uh, sheer Shear is a strong indication of whether or not we do have any type of circulation. Even shear history is going to show that it's, it really doesn't show much once it got south of 34, which is good. We go back to show you hail history and maybe still some hail that we do see currently happening over uh, Cove, so that we see that just south of Delville. So for anyone that's in the Cove area in eastern Perry County, there still might be some hail that we do have that's happening right now. Um, Dan, I know we've got Dan Tommaso. I tell you what, Dan, let's see if we can take you one more time. I know you have an update for us here before this tornado warning expires. Yeah, I received a report from my friend in Marysville, and he's reporting mostly lightning, um, rain on the trailing edge of the cell. Not necessarily a heavy push of rain initially, um, but the structure. I tweeted out the, the picture that he sent out, so at Doppler Dan on Twitter, he tweeted out great structure to the storm that he could see from a distance. So this thing really did mean business, and you can see that it was wrapped up. It had that rotational look to it. So this storm still posed a significant risk as of about 10 minutes ago. So I don't want to totally 
lower our guard yet. Even though the National Weather Service has let this thing kind of ride um, until the expiration time, um, there certainly were signs of storms you don't normally see here in this area. Um, so unfortunately, anywhere near the Marysville area up through Newport, um, there may be some damage. Uh, we can't rule that out, whether from straight line winds or from a possible brief tornado. But certainly um, those pictures that I saw from him are not something you see every day. I also want to remind folks, too, and, and some viewers are reminding me of this on Twitter, if you can't get the game right now because we are streaming the tornado coverage, you can stream the game online. So for those of you trying to look for the game, if you have um, any of the various sports apps, there are ways to get the game elsewhere if you're you know, itching to watch the latest with the tip-off and the start of the first quarter. Uh, and, Dan, here, here's some good news, too, passing along. Uh, so the National Weather Service uh, has now expired the tornado warning for Perry and Juniata County. So I tell you what, uh, I want to thank Dan Tommaso, Michael Brulo, Valerie Pritchett, everyone else here in the studio and up in production that uh, kept things going. Uh, we'll keep an eye on anything. If we get any storm damage, obviously we're going to be on after the game to update you on the storm damage. You can also follow us here uh, on social media. Also have an update on our website if we hear of anything that comes through of any type of damage. But for those of us in the Harrisburg area, Eastern Cumberland and Southwestern Dolphin counties, we do have a severe, uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So watch for hail and some of those damaging winds. So we'll keep an eye on this. But right now we'll get back to uh, the NBA finals here. Game six. Thanks for staying with us. Now, when it comes to a financial plan, this broker is your man. Let's open your binders to page 188. Uh, Carl, are there different planning options in here? Options? Plans we can build on our own. Thanks for watching this 